What's up, wonderful, amazing, sweet, and lovely people? How are you all doing today? Hope you all have an amazing day today. Hope you have a blessed day. Joy. Welcome to my room, Share for Life. Today's a beautiful day. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys are so amazing. So, I just wanted to make a video today to speak to you guys. We just got back from church. Church was awesome and amazing. Pastor Kim speaks so much life into us, and I really appreciate it. Because every time she starts prophesying like that, I just get up and I say, Lord, I receive, I receive, I receive. These are powerful words that kind of, um, these are powerful words that stir up something on the inside of me and causes things that I think are impossible to begin to happen. And although I have faith, but I've also noticed that sometimes I allow my mind to think about possible scenarios as to how whatever I'm trusting God for could um, could happen. But then I now realize with the things that God is showing me recently that I could be my own, um, what do you call it, my own obstacle. When I'm so fixated on how whatever it is I'm trusting God for is going to come about and I don't allow God to work it out the way he's going to work it out. If it doesn't come about the way that I want it to come about or it seems like it's failing and the way that I want it to happen, to go, it doesn't work that way, then I might get disappointed and feel like it's never going to happen. But see, I've learned from my history with God that when something fails, Something that I gave my all to, something that I committed myself to, something that I really devoted time and effort and energy to, it fails. It means God has something better. And I know this for sure. I know this for sure. Because recently God proved it in my life. So going to church and listening to Pastor Kim and the things that she's saying, like God just kind of uses her to speak into my life the words that I need at the moment. That stirs up something in me. It's usually something that I'm already discussing or like... I'm already like having this conversation with God about and then when I go to church I hear her reiterate it and says it based off of the conclusion I made from my time with God and I'm like wow God this is you confirming this so even through Pastor Stephen Furtick as well whenever I watch him and he's speaking like this morning I listened to his message before I went to church and he was talking about how God will come into your life and show up like your faith doesn't prevent the attack the attack is going to happen but it is your faith in God that will help you get through it and overcome it. You see what I'm saying? So anyways, it's just so powerful. And I just wanted to make this video today to talk to somebody today. There's something else God was just talking, God was talking to me about um, yesterday. And then I spoke to my heart to call a friend. And when I called this friend, I was talking and to speaking with this friend. And then God revealed the reason why he was talking to me about the things that he was talking to me about. So I just want to talk to you guys today. Those of you who came by this video, I know you didn't click on this video uh, by mistake. You clicked on this video because God has something that he wants you to hear from what I'm going to say. And now I see ants over here. I hope I don't have ant. Oh gosh, we do. We have ant infestation, y'all. I need to spray. I need to spray. I have ant infestation over here. But I'm not going to worry about it right now until I'm done speaking to you guys. Actually, I will. Let me go. All right, you guys, I'm back. We just have this lots of ants. A lot of ants just over there. Zoe has been eating some brownies on this couch. That's why she's been dropping crumbs. So the ants, of course, found the crumbs and it's been a lot of ants, but I just pray. So I know the rest of them will die off. I do need to go buy my, my, um, a new bottle of spray because I just used up all my spray over here. But anyways, let me go back to the talk, you guys. Um, this video, I just wanted to, I wanted to encourage those of you who are thinking that on your life doesn't matter or you're not important because there's nothing exciting or amazing happening in your life at the moment i want you to know that you're important whether something amazing or exciting happens or not you're important you're valuable god loves you god loves you your value does not decrease or increase based on whatever blows up in your life or doesn't blow up you are valuable just as you are god loves you even if nothing exciting or mind-blowing ever happens in your life. But I know mind-blowing, amazing, exciting things will happen in your life in the name of the Lord. But I just want you to know that even if they didn't happen, you're still valuable. You're still important to God. You're still important to the people who care about you. All right? The love that people have for you is not based on whether or not something amazing happens in your life. Okay? You can't put a price tag on that love. Do you hear me? The love is unconditional. So quit, quit putting down, down, well, quit putting yourself down and looking down on yourself because you feel like nothing exciting is happening in your life that could make people love you. Those who truly love you do not love you because of the exciting thing happening in your life. They love you just as you are. And God loves you ju just as you are. 
Don't ever feel like you have to prove something in order for God to love you. In order to feel like you are worthy of the love. There's nothing you could ever do or not do that could make you unworthy for love. The love of God. All right? That love is who you are. You were created, molded, fashioned out of love. And the people who God has designed to be in your life, the right people, they will love you. They will see you. Not because of what you achieved or what you did not achieve. They will see you for the essence of who you are, which is love. Accepted. Already chosen. You see what I'm saying? Because you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. I just got scared a little bit because I felt like there was this presence. This presence of the Lord. It became visible to me. I just looked around. And I didn't see him. It's like, God is here. The presence of God is here. So I just want you to know that you are acceptable. And I see you. Just like you, I felt that way too. I felt like since things were happening in the lives of other people, so perhaps because nothing amazing is happening in mine or mind-blowing, does that mean that I'm not accepted, I'm not appreciated, or I'm not worthy? But then the Lord has been speaking to me. He said, your worthiness is not dependent on whether something amazing happens, like fireworks, whether the fireworks goes off or it doesn't. Your worthiness is written in the very essence of who you are, in your soul, in your very DNA. You were crafted out of love and out of worthiness. So don't you ever allow things on the outside to define your worthiness or to... Or to to um what do you call it don't allow anything outside of you to define your worthiness and don't allow anything outside of you to determine your worthiness because you're worthy just as you are you are valuable you are loved all right you're loved you're loved and one of my friends asked me a question that what what should you do when you feel like god is silent you're trying your hardest to try to make things happen but it seems like the harder you try the deeper the silence, what do you do? And you just feel like you can't really hear God clearly. And I still feel like these ants are everywhere. So here's what I do, because I've been in seasons where I felt like God was not moving. It just felt, it just felt flat, seasons that felt dark, seasons that felt quiet and still, like God had abandoned me, like nothing is happening. What, would, what do you do? Here is what I have done in those seasons. Whatever it is I'm praying to God for, whatever it is I'm aiming at, I don't stop. I don't stop because I stop feeling the presence of God. Because the presence of God is always there. Whether I can feel it or not, he's always there and he's always moving. And here's something I've learned from many teachers, including my pastor, Pastor Kim. She said, the teacher is always silent during the test. The teacher is always silent during the test. And in my situation, I've seen it. I've been through so much, experienced so much, seen so much, that... I've had every reason to quit and not take the next step. I've had every reason to be intimidated because it's felt like every time I try to go for something bigger, something different, something better than I've had before, then all of these challenges will start popping up, trying to make me feel unworthy, trying to make me feel inadequate, trying to make me feel like it's another opportunity for me to fail. Like, okay, you're about to fail again. Why are you going after this? It's going to fail and blow up in your face. But me, I have recognized that when I start feeling that way, that means God has something better. God has something greater. I'm not going to stop. You know what I mean? I increase the volume of my praise and gratitude to God. Another thing I do is remember in the past seasons how God came through when I felt like nothing was going to come out of whatever I was going through. For instance, when I lost my first child to a very rare disease and heart condition. The doctors told me I was going to have kids like that and lose my children in infancy. But I told them, no, affliction will not rise up a second time because my God will not let this happen again. I was not the expert. They were the experts. And they were the ones who had seen situations like that arise. So they felt like they were in a place to tell me, ask me to go do some tests. I said, I'm not going to do any tests. I know my God is going to bless me again and my story will be different. And these same people will tell me it is different when they do their evaluation on my future kids. I left that place. Their words still hung in my ears. But I held on to the promise of God. And I kept declaring the promise of God. I kept declaring what the Bible says. I am. My children shall be mighty in the land. My children shall be mighty in the land. And God will bless me with healthy, amazing, beautiful children. So this story, however it turned out, which is, of course, unfavorable, 
it's not going to repeat itself again because my God is able to transform any situation. There were days when I woke up scared. There were times when I was like doubting, but I did not allow the doubt to overshadow the word of God. I did not allow the doubt to stop me from praying. I feel like a lot of us, we stop when the voice of the doubt becomes louder than the voice of our praise. When it seems like the situation in our face, what we can see, feel, hear, and taste and touch is stronger. The evidence proves stronger than what we're trusting God for. But as somebody who's been through hell and came back on fire, as somebody who goes to a church where my pastor has been through hell and came back on fire, and I keep listening to the words that she speaks, and I keep evaluating my life, revisiting times when I felt like I would never get out of a difficult situation, but God got me out of it. I realize that no matter what the situation may be, no matter how difficult that defeat, that setback may be, it happened because God has something better. So don't give up. You're learning the lesson. All right. You're learning a lesson. Hold on just a little bit longer. Trust in the Lord. Take the next steps. Don't stop going after your goal. That dream that God has placed in your heart. Don't stop going after it because the enemy wants to intimidate you and stop you from going after what God has placed in your heart. So the God who placed that vision in your heart is going to bring it to pass, but you're going to have to go through some, some things to get to it. And in the midst of it, there's going to be things that rise up, all right? Opposition that come up. But one thing I want to remind you of is God already went ahead of you. He is the Alpha and the Omega. So he already is at the other side of your victory. You have the victory. But you got to still have, you got to go through the storm still. But you will go through the storm, but the storm will not swallow you up if you don't stop. If you stop in the storm, it will swallow you up. But if you keep pushing and you know that he that is with you is greater than the storm, then he that is with you will show up mightier than that storm and you will have the victory. You are fighting from a place of victory knowing that your God is mighty to save. So don't you ever lose hope. Don't you ever lose hope. Keep trusting in the Lord. I'm making this video for you, number one, to remind you that you're already loved. There is nothing you could do that could define that love, take that love away, or reduce that love. That, that is permanent. Your, the love that God has for you is permanent. Your very DNA is crafted in love. So you don't have to prove anything or show anything in order to, de to, to, de to, um, in order to determine whether or not you are loved. You can't pay for it. You couldn't pay for it. The love that you are is priceless. So just take that. Just know that. Number two, when something happens that you were not expecting, the opposite of what you were expecting. You gave your all, you evaluated the situation, you looked at the statistics, you did what was asked by the experts, but still it turned out not the way you expected. That is because God has something better. God has something better and he always does, but you gotta use your mouth to declare it. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, and the Bible says life and death is on the power of the tongue. When you use your tongue to declare failure because you see failure, you are actually defining it and establishing it. But when you speak success, victory in the midst of defeat, you're saying, yes, I'm coming from a place of victory. And I know my God never fails, so this is turning out in my favor. So I'm encouraging you today through this message and with these ants running around, I think the, um, the box spray worked. I just want you to know that God cares for you. That your, the love that God has for you, your very essence is love. You are not defined by what you did or what you did not do. That love is always there. It's unconditional. So you better take it. It is there whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, you are loved. And then number two, when God feels silent in your season, it means that he's working something amazing for you. The teacher is always silent during the test. God is with you. There is, a, there is something you're learning in this season, but don't stop. Don't, don't, don't keep going after that dream. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit going after that dream because you've just experienced a setback or because you feel like you can't hear God. Keep doing what you know, the next best thing. Keep doing the next best, best thing. Keep sending out your resume. Keep developing that business plan. Keep asking people. Keep learning. Keep stretching. Just keep moving. Don't stop. Because the moment you stop, the enemy will start reminding you of the failure. The enemy will try to mess with your mind and make you feel like it's all over for you because you stopped. But don't stop. You are six feet from gold, baby. You're right now in your own acres of diamonds. And greater is he who is in you, for you, and with you than he who is in the world. I know this from experience. I know this from experience. I want to take my kids to Nigeria. Apply for their passport. Delays. I was going to do it in July. Now we're in August. 
and I just got a letter from them recently after they, they took forever to get to my, my, my application. Now the consent form from Hunter, from their dad, has to be resigned and sent back to them. It is very annoying and dumb. I don't like it, but I, I want to do this so that they can have their passport. But during this time of waiting, I was also thinking about um, purchasing my own franchise with the travel business. I've been an associate for almost three years and I decided I won my own franchise. I didn't have the money. I looked for partners. It felt like it was going to work out, but it went back and forth. You know, I believed the last partners I wanted to get, I believed, I mean, they assured me it was going to work out. They were going to come through for me. At the last minute, they withdrew and said no. I was devastated. I cried and I said, God, this is not how, what I expected. I thought that this was going to work out. This was it, but it didn't. So that means you have something better. I don't know what that is because right now I'm scared. I'm frustrated. I'm disappointed, but I know you have the final say. So God, it's all in your hands. I didn't give up on that dream, but I quit looking for partners. I just started looking for the money to do it by myself. I prayed about it. Not only did God provide the money, y'all, when I went ahead and I presented my application, baby, the price that I was giving for this franchise, y'all, less it was even less than the deposit I was initially supposed to make. Y'all, I'm telling you, I bought it all cash and I own it 100%, so I don't have to deal with the stress of having business partners. It's got to be me. So what am I saying? Sometimes you may be disappointed and you come to this point where you feel like this is killing me. This is crushing. This is frustrating. But you know what? God is saving you. And these ants are ridiculous. Man, if you love ants watching this video, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. So anyways, you guys, I'm telling you, you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Everything that you're going through that seems like a disappointment, God is about to use it for his glory. He's about to blow your mind. God blew my mind July 17th. My mind is still blown. I could never have thought that the way things went that day, they would have gone that way. They went better above. See, you know how you think about the very details and the very last and how things could go the best case scenario. You know how you think about that sometimes with certain things? It went better than the best case scenarios that I could have come up with in my mind. What am I saying? Whatever your situation may be, whatever the disappointment may be that you've just experienced, something greater is on the other side. Something greater is on the other side. Could it be that the reason this didn't work out the way that you thought is because God has a better way? A better way that will save you so much stress and struggle and pain and, and, and sleepless nights, could it be? I know in my case, that's what happened. So I just want to encourage you today. Number one, you are loved because you were crafted, made out of love. And nothing you could ever do could make you less worthy of the love or more worthy of the love. It is defined. It is who you are. Love is who you are. Your very DNA is crafted out of love. So you're already accepted. Your worth is not dependent on the, on the, on the impact you make on other people's life or the impact you don't make. No, you're already worthy and accepted. You better accept that. When you fail, failure is not a, it's not a, it's not a, what do you call it? It's not final. Failure is not final. It's all part of the process, baby. It's because God has something better. You've tried your best. You've given it your all. Now let the way maker come through and show you how it works, baby. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he shall direct your path. Surrender. That's what I do. I'm surrendering. Because everything I could have done, I do. Being compulsive, I did, but it still failed. It didn't take me nowhere. When I surrendered and said, God, I don't know what, what I don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen next. I don't know, I don't know, God, but I know you do. So I give you permission to to bless me, to mess with my mind by just blowing my mind with the miracles that you do. So I'm stepping out of the way. Step out of the way and let God come through. And I promise you, you will see the glory of God. You will see God do things in your life that you could have never imagined that will blow your mind. That will, that will cause you to, to swim or to, to float like you're floating in cloud nine, whatever that may be. I promise you, because he did it for me recently. And I'm still in awe of how I'm now a franchise owner. And I'm no longer an associate. And God is blessing me with clients and I am grateful. And I'm like, God, blow my mind again. Blow my mind again. I need you to blow my mind. So I pray that God will blow your mind. That whatever may be that difficulty that you've just experienced, that setback, that frustration, that rejection, it was God's protection. And soon you're about to realize why God had to protect you from what you thought was it. To give you what the real deal is. That will give you peace and joy for the glory of his name. All right? So 
Thank you all for watching. You guys are awesome and amazing. I appreciate every one of you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you thumbs up, you comment, you like, you come back for more. I appreciate you guys. And make sure you subscribe as well. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day, all right? Know that you are loved. You are loved, simply loved. There's nothing you could do that could redefine it, recalculate it, recalibrate it, or make it any better. You are loved, period. All right, period. And I love you too. <laughs> I do. I love you and I wish you all the best. Bye, wonderful, amazing, sweet, and lovely people. I'll see you all later. Bye. <laughs>